Okay, so let's resume. Um, as the 1940s drew to a close, the Cold War heated up in Asia, uh, first in China. Uh, so let's think about the long history of China. Um, after the Manchu dynasty came to an end, three forces vied for control of China. You have the nationalists on one side, you have the um, communists led by Mao Zedong on the other side, and you have the Japanese, which began their occupation of China in 1931, expanded it in 1937. Of course, we remember the Japanese lost World War II. They surrendered and they agreed to withdraw from China um, in 1945. That created a, 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 a four year long struggle between the nationalists led by Chiang Kai-shek on one side, and as we mentioned, the communists on the other side led by Mao Zedong, a civil war took place. But by 1945, um, Mao Zedong had consolidated his control over mainland China, which forced Chiang Kai-shek to flee to the island of Formosa, where they founded modern day Taiwan. Um, that was a terrifying scenario for the West because under this situation, the world's largest country uh, had converted to communism. And that meant more than one in four people in the world lived in a regime controlled by communists. Um, Truman being a Democrat, being perhaps somewhat more sympathetic to more government intervention in the economy, uh, was blamed for this. He was blamed for the communist takeover of China and the creation of the People's Republic of China, which of course is still the regime that controls China. So if we look at the long history of Korea, where the Cold War heated up um, in Asia, another region where the Cold War heated up in Asia, um, Japan annexed Korea in 1910. And between 1910 and 1945, about 35 years, Korea was governed as a Japanese colony. Of course, the Japanese lost World War II. Um, they surrendered. Uh, to the Soviets in the northern part of Korea. Uh, they uh, surrendered to the United States in the south part of Korea. And true to Stalin's word, both powers created polities in their regions of occupation that were sympathetic um, to their own ideologies. So Stalin created a communist dictatorship or socialist dictatorship, if you will, in the North. And uh, the United States created a, a free market regime um, in the South. They divided the Korean Peninsula along the 38th parallel. And to this day, uh, Korea is split between uh, North Koreans, north of the 38th parallel, and South Korea in the sub to, to, to the south of the um, 38th parallel. And they called their uh, regimes uh, the Republic of Korea in the south and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in the north. But just like East Germany, don't be fooled. There was nothing democratic um, about um, North Korea. It was a communist dictatorship. So that brings us to the election of 1948. Uh, the Democrats nominated their sitting president, as they nearly always do. The Republicans nominated Thomas Dewey. Everybody thought Dewey was going to win, but Truman uh, managed to scrape a victory together. And he won the election and stood to serve a second term. <clears throat> 
Uh, the Korean War began when North Korea invaded South Korea in an attempt to unify the peninsula under one regime. Um, that was unacceptable to the United States, which had been committed to a policy of containment of communism. And so Truman assembled a United Nations force, um, which landed on the Korean Peninsula at a place called Inchon. The South Korean army pushed back from Pusan in the southern part of Korea. And between the UN force and the South Korean army, they managed to force the North Koreans back across the 38th parallel. The mission had been accomplished. But sadly, hubris set in. Uh, General Douglas MacArthur insisted, with Truman's blessing, mind you, on destroying the North Korean army. So they, they, they ventured beyond the 38th parallel right up to the Yalu River where the border with China was. And that provoked uh, 300,000 Chinese troops to get involved. Um, Matthew, General Matthew Ridgway halted the Chinese advance and held them at the 38th parallel. The Korean War was bogged down in a three-year-long stalemate when it could have ended right then and there in 1950 had they simply been satisfied with halting uh, or holding the North Koreans at the 38th parallel. The invasion of North Korea created this three-year-long stalemate, in other words. Now, as the stalemate went on, General Douglas MacArthur insisted that the U.S. should uh, use nuclear weapons against the Chinese. Uh, President Truman said, no, we want to keep this conflict contained to the Korean Peninsula. Uh, we, we don't want to do that. That would be the wrong war in the wrong place against the wrong enemy at the wrong time. MacArthur began publicly criticizing the president. And if you're a general in the army, you're not supposed to do that. Um, that is insubordination. The president is the commander in chief. Uh, when you enlist in the army, you give up certain civilian rights. And one of them is public freedom of speech, the freedom to speak publicly. And so Truman um, warned MacArthur they met, actually. They, he flew to an island in the middle of the Pacific, and they met um, at a U.S. base of operations. And Truman said, you've got to stop this. You've got to stop publicly criticizing me. Um, if you do, if you continue to do this, I'm going to relieve you of command. And MacArthur, being a legend and immensely popular with the American people, thought Truman was bluffing. And so he flew back to Korea and continued publicly criticizing Truman for not using nuclear weapons. Um, and sure enough, Truman made good on his word. He was not bluffing. He fired MacArthur. The country was shocked. Here is a legend. Uh, the man who was a hero of World War II and this seemingly unimpressive man from Missouri fired him. And so MacArthur came home to a hero's welcome. They gave him a ticker tape parade on Fifth Avenue in New York City. He got to address a joint session of Congress. Um, no one could believe that Truman had fired him. But then MacArthur started grandstanding a little too much. All of this popularity that he was enjoying went to his head. And the American people began to see that, hey, we, we've kind of got a prima donna on our hands. And they came around to the idea that, well, maybe Truman was right. This guy's too full of himself. 
Um, and MacArthur was, in a sense, relegated to uh, a, a quiet retirement. So that brings us to the election of uh, 1952. Uh, Truman had been in office for seven years. At this point in his presidency, because the Korean War was very unpopular, um, he reached an approval rating, I think it was 21 to 23 um, percent. He said, you know what, I've served long enough, seven years, seven and a half years is almost eight years is long enough. It's time for me to step aside. So the Democrats nominated Adelaide Stevenson. And the Republicans nominated Dwight Eisenhower, uh, the hero of D-Day. And the Republicans won their first presidential election in 20 years. Uh, the Republican Party had been blamed for the Great Depression. Um, you have 20 straight years of Democratic administrations, but uh, to reverse that trend, because they have run the hero of D-Day, the very much beloved General Dwight Eisenhower, um, they won that election. Eisenhower brought an end to the Korean War by, actually the Korean War has never ended. He, create, he, he brought the North Koreans to agree to an armistice. Uh, the Korean War is technically still going on because they have not reached a peace that both sides have agreed to. Um, but um, Eisenhower managed to force an end to the fighting at least by threatening the North Koreans with the use of tactical nuclear weapons, which are small nuclear weapons uh, intended to be used on the battlefield. So um, what was the result of the Korean War? Uh, status quo antebellum. They simply agreed to return to the conditions that existed before the war. But meanwhile, uh, 54,000 Americans died in that conflict, countless Koreans um, died in that conflict. A lot of blood and treasure spilled uh, for status quo antebellum. All right, so we're going to take a break and start the next set of notes in just a little while.